Hello everyone, welcome to HJ Programming Solutions. So in last video we have seen how to create a Spring Boot application and connect that with the database. In today's video we are going to create a complete Spring Boot application which cover all the CRUD operations. So we are going to perform the CRUD operations on the employee object. So let's create the project first. New Spring Starter Project. So here we will keep the name Spring Boot CRUD operations. Just click on the next all the by default details will be there. And here we have to select the dependencies which we are going to use in the project. Very first we will select Spring Web dependency. Then we are going to use the MySQL. So we have to select MySQL driver dependency and then Spring Data JPA dependency. These three dependencies we are going to use. Now let's click on the finish. Our project is created. Let's open the project. So inside this source main resources folder we have the application.properties file and inside this application.properties file we are going to write all the configurations to connect our application to the database and all other uh, java logic we are going to write inside this source main java folder. So here we have the package com.hjprogramming.crudx and inside that we have this by default java file which contain the main method so our application starting point will be from this class okay now very first let's create the structure of our project so here on the base package just right click and create new package so very first we will create the package for the entity Then new package for the controller. Then new package and this is for the repository. And the last one will be for the service layer. service layer okay so now our basic project structure is ready now very first we will create the entity class and after that we will connect our application to database and after that we will going to write all the other CRUD operation logic okay so let's start with the entity here right click on this package and create a new class so all CRUD operation we are going to perform on the employee. So let's create the employee class. Very first we have to annotate this class with entity annotation. And then we have to annotate this with at the rate table annotation. And here we can provide the name for our table. Okay, so here we are going to provide the name employee table. If we don't provide the name, then by default it will consider a class name as a table name. Okay, now let's create some fields here. Private int id, then private string name of the employee. After that private float salary of the employee. And then let's take mail ID of the employee. Okay. So these are four fields which we have taken. Now let's create the constructor for all the fields. We have to right click here then source and then generate a constructor using fields. So here just we have to select all the fields and uh, ID we are not selecting because ID we will generate automatically. So here the constructor using field is created. Let's create the by default constructor as well. And then we have to write the getter and setter for each field. Okay. Same way we, uh, we can do. just we have to right click select this source and then generate getter setter. Select all and generate. Okay. 
so here this id will be our primary key for the table so that's why here we can use at the rate id annotation and then this id we want to auto increment so for that at the rate generated at the rate generated value annotation we have to use and here the strategy will be identity okay now for the other fields let's annotate that with the column and here if we want to give the column name then we can mention here at the rate column and here we can give the name emp name okay so now the column name for the table will be emp name okay if we don't provide then by default it will be name only so for this salary let's keep as it is only here we are going to write at the rate column for the mail also at the rate column so that inside that table these four columns will be created okay now we are done with the employee entity now let's connect our application to the database for that we have to write all the configuration inside this application dot properties file okay now let's write the configuration here very first we have to write spring dot spring dot data source dot url and here we have to mention the url jdbc colon mysql colon slash slash and here we have to give the local host and the mysql port will be 3306 slash here we have to give the our database so here i am giving empdb at the rate use SSL and it will be false okay then we have to write spring dot data source dot username and username will be root then data source dot password so password will be root underscore pass underscore one two three four after that we have to write the dialect configuration so for that we have to use database dot platform or database yeah database platform so here we are going to use the mysql dialect so for that org dot hibernate dot dialect dot mysql fiu ino db dialect then if you want to see the queries which are generating behind the scene so for that we have to use jpa dot show sql and it will be true so that we can see the sqls generated inside our console okay after that we have to write spring dot jpa dot hibernate and ddl auto it will be update okay so these are the properties which we have to write to connect our spring boot application to the database okay so currently in this employee entity we have given the table name as employee table okay and in the application dot properties file we have mentioned our db as a emp db okay now let's open the mysql workbench and see if there is any table inside this emp db database let's execute this show table query and currently we don't have any table inside this 
EMP DB. Okay, now let's run the application. Now our EMP table should be created inside the EMP database. Okay, so how we can run the application? Just we have to right click here and run as a Spring Boot app. Let's see. Our application is running now. So see here, we can see, uh, let's, okay. So see here, the query is generated, create table, employee table. In the application.properties file, we have written spring.jpa.showsql as a true. That's why we are able to see the SQL generated. Okay. Now let's open the SQL workbench and see if we can see the created table or not. Show tables. I am running this command and here the employee table is created. Okay. Now our application is successfully connected with the database. Now let's start with the CRUD operations. Now let's create the repository. So right click on the repository package and create the interface employee repository. So here we are going to use a Spring Data JPA. So we have to extend JPA repository and here we have to give our entity class and the primary key column type okay so our primary key is id and the type of id is integer so here we are going to give the type as a integer okay so this repository class is ready now now let's create the service class here inside this service we have to right click new interface so here employee service Inter of we can give okay or employee service only we can give so this is our employee service interface very first let's annotate this with at the rate service annotation and inside this interface we have to write all the methods which we are required and also we have to create the implementation for this interface so employee service impl we can give this will be implements the employee service interface okay so let's write the method inside this interface we want to write the method to create the employee okay then to get the employee after that to get the employee by id okay then we want to write the method for the delete and update okay so these are five methods which we are going to write so let's write first method public then public employee save EMP or public employee create EMP okay and here we are going to pass the employee okay so we have to import this employee class now here we are going to create the employee object okay this employee we will pass as a request body in our postman and this employee will be created inside our employee table class okay now we have to here we can see one red line error so let's see what is what it is saying add an implemented method or make type employee service implement as a abstract okay in this employee service interface we have written one method so it is saying 
add that unimplemented method here or make this class as a abstract so that the other class which implement this interface can write the implementation logic for that method okay so here we are going to add an implemented method here just remove this auto generated stuffs now here we have to create the employee okay so very first we have to create the employee repository object here so employee repository and here we are giving the name as a repo and let's write the annotation auto wired okay now here we have to return repo dot save and here we have to pass the employee okay so whatever employee we are going to pass that employee will be created inside the employee table okay. now we have to write this method inside the controller okay let's create the controller here right click and new class class name will be employee controller finish okay inside this controller class we we can write all the rest apis so very first let's annotate this with at the rate rest controller and one more annotation we can write at the rate request mapping and the base mapping we can give here like emp okay now let's write the first method public employee and here we can give the name as a save employee here we have to pass the employee which we want to save inside our database okay uh, let's import this employee class first okay now here we are going to return the okay very first let's create the service class very first let's create the reference for the employee service service okay and write the auto wired annotation here okay auto wired annotation okay now here we have to return service dot create employee method okay now so here we are creating the employee so for creating the employee we can use at the rate post mapping annotation okay and inside post mapping annotation we can provide the url for the rest api so here we can write the url as save okay now this employee we are passing as a request body so for that we can write the annotation at the rate request body okay now we are good with this method and we can test now let's run the project and see if we are able to save the employee inside the database or not application is running yes so now we are going to use the postman to test our apis okay so here we have to select post and then emp save okay for emp save and inside this body we have to give the employee details so we have id so id id actually will be generated automatically so name salary and one more we have email so email we can write here meenal at the rate gmail.com okay and here we have to select this json now let's send we can see 
here id is one name minal salary 90000 male is getting null so let's see why we are getting the null value here okay so inside this employee class we have the column okay so here we have given the name as a mail but while sending as a request body we have written the email so that's the reason that uh, value here saved as a null okay now here i have updated the value so here let's add another record so here we can give the name as a sheetal and salary 45000 and mail will be sheetal at the rate gmail.com send okay so second record we have added successfully name is sheetal id is at all incremented and salary and mail we have added let's add one more entity uh, let's add one more record so name will be bob and salary will be 57000 and here bob at the rate gmail.com okay so now we have added three records okay so let's open the mysql workbench and see if we can see this details in, inside the employee table or not okay so select star from employee table we have to execute this script so very first we have three records inside our employee table mail is null because while adding the request body we have written a wrong column name so that's why null value is stored here okay so we are going to write the delete rest api or update rest api so that time we can update the value for okay so our save rest api is working fine now let's create the another api okay very first we have to write the method inside this employee service interface okay so now we are done with the create employee rest api now let's create the second rest api to get all the employees okay so public so here we want to return a list of employees so here the return type will be list it will import from the java.util package and here we have to write list of employees okay and method will be get employees okay now let's add this method here in employee service implementation class add an implemented method and remove this auto generated things okay so here we have to return report dot find all okay so this find all method will return list of employees now let's create the method inside this employee controller okay so here we will write the method public it is returning a list of employees so list of employees will be return type and the method name we will keep get emps okay now here we are going to return service dot get employees okay and this is the we here uh, we are fetching the employees so annotation we can use get mapping annotation and the url we can give get okay or get emps we can give now let's rerun the application application is running yes so now let's now let's test this rest api slash get emps okay so here we have to select get 
and the URL will be get EMPs. Let's run this one and see. Yes, so see here, we can see three employees which we have added previously. Okay, so first is Meenal, second is Sheetal and the third is Bob. So our get employees REST API is also successfully created. Now, let's create the another REST API to get the employees based on their ID. Okay, so first write the method inside this employee service interface public here it is it will return a employee based on their id so return type will be employee and method name we will keep as a get employee okay and here we have to pass the employee id as well so parameter will be int id now second step we have to add this method here inside this implementation class so method is added successfully here we have passed this id as a parameter and now we will return the employee repo dot here we have the method find by id find by id okay and here we can pass the id okay change the method return type to optional okay we can here make this return type as optional or here we can write just or else null okay now go to this controller and write the method for that public employee method name will be get employee and here we have to pass the id and then return service dot get employee okay so this is also uh, fetching the employees so annotation we can use get mapping and here we will write the url as get emp and we are passing this id as a parameter so we can use path variable and for that we can pass the id like this so here we have to write at the rate path variable annotation okay so this id is binded here now let's run the application again and see if we are able to <coughs> application is running now let's see if we can get the employee as per their id or not okay in postman the get here the url will be emp get emp slash uh, let's write the id as a 2 so for 2 it is sheetal now it should give us the details for the id 2 okay so see here we are able to see the details for the id 2 okay now let's fetch the details for the id 1 we can get here id is 1 name is meenal now let's test for the third employee as well so it is bob okay so we are successfully uh, able to fetch the employees based on their id okay now we are done with the create employee then get employee then get employee based on their id okay now let's write the rest api to update the employee okay so public here the return type will be employee and method name update employee okay so for updating the employee here we have to pass the employee and then we have to pass the employee id as well okay so employee this employee will be uh, 
for updating the employee details and the id for which employee we want to update the details okay now inside this implementation class we have to add this unimplemented methods so here just add an implemented method remove the auto generated stuffs so here very first we have to get the employee okay for that here we can write employee old employee is equal to report dot find by id find by id and here we can pass this id okay if not found then so here if employee is not found then we can write the customized exception and we can throw that but for now let's keep it simple so here i am just writing or else null okay so this will be our old employee and we want to update the details for this employee okay for example if here we pass the employee id as a one then that employee with id one will be stored inside this old employee and now we are going to update this old employee okay and then we will return that updated employee now here how we can do that here we have to write old employee dot set id and here we have to set the id okay how we can set emp dot get id okay now old employee dot set name and here we can write emp dot get name okay then we are going to update all the details so old emp dot set salary and here emp dot get salary okay so here id name and salary we have updated now let's update the mail as well emp dot set mail and here emp dot get mail okay so this employee we are going to pass in our request body okay and from that whatever will be the updated value we will get here and that value we are setting in the old employee okay now we have to return this old employee before that we have to save this employee okay so report dot save and here we can pass old emp and then let's return that old employee okay now this is our updated employee okay now let's write the update method inside the controller so here public return type will be employee and the method name we will keep update employee and here we have to pass the id of the employee and the employee object okay and now we will return service dot update employee here we will pass this employee and the id of the employee okay now this is the update method so we can use put mapping annotation here and url we will provide as a employee id okay now this id will be the path variable so here we have to use annotation at the rate path variable and this employee we are passing as a request body so here also we have to use the annotation at the rate request body okay so now we are done with our update method now let's rerun the application again and see if we can update the details of the employee or not 
so application is running now let's open the postman and first let's run get emp let's see how many employees we have now so we have three employees sheetal seema and bob now let's update the details for the employee id one okay so here we have to select put and the employee here the url will be emp slash here we have to pass the employee id okay so employee id we are going to pass one then we have to select raw and here we have to change the details okay for the id one name is sheetal now here we will update the name to max and salary we will keep at seventy seven thousand and mail will be max at the rate gmail.com okay now enter here see here we have successfully updated all the details for the employee id one name is updated to max salary updated at 77000 and mail max at the rate gmail.com now let's open the workbench and see if that details are updated or not for the id one currently we have the mail as sheetal at the rate gmail and the employee name as a sheetal now let's see if that sheetal employee name is updated to max or not so here see here for the id one name is max salary 77000 and mail address is also updated successfully okay so now now let's write the rest api for the delete employee so very first we have to write the method inside the employee service interface employee service interface so here public void delete employee and here we have to pass the employee id based on the employee id it will delete the employee okay now let's add this method here in employee service implementation class add unimplemented methods so we have added the method delete employee let's remove auto generated stuffs and here so here we have to write repo dot delete by id so here we have the method delete by id and we have to pass the id here okay now let's write this delete employee method inside the employee controller here so public here we will take the return type as a response entity and type will be string delete employee here we have to pass the employee id okay now this is the delete so here we can use the mapping delete mapping annotation and url we can pass delete slash id so this id again we have to pass as a path variable so at the rate path variable annotation we can use and here we have to return new response entity so here we have to select response entity which is returning here employee deleted successfully and here we have to 
write the status http status dot ok and before that we can write service dot delete employee now let's save this and rerun the application again let's open the postman now and here now for uh, let's check how many employees we have get emps method so currently we have three employees now let's uh, delete the third employee so for that here select delete and then emp delete and we have to pass the employee id three so here we can see the message employee deleted successfully now let's see if that employee is deleted or not so here emp get emp slash 3 will be the id let's see we are getting that employee or not so here we are not able to see any employee with the id 3 okay or we can see get emps so now emp get emps okay so this url is no, url was not correct so that's why we were getting the error now let's see here we have only two employees and the third employee is deleted successfully let's open the workbench and see if that employee is deleted or not so currently we have three employees and now when we run this statement again now it should be only Two employees okay so here we have the one and two third employees deleted successfully okay so this way we can create the rest api's for all the crud operations so in this video we have covered uh, how to create the employee then how we can fetch the employees after that we can uh, discussed how we can fetch the employee based on employee id and after that how to update the employee by passing the employee id as a path variable and the employee details in the request body so after that we have seen how we can delete the employee based on their employee id okay so this way we can create the full CRUD operation Spring Boot application. I hope this is clear to everyone. If you have any queries, please mention in the comment section. We will discuss on the queries. So, thank you for watching the video. If you like, please share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel. Thank you. We will meet in the next video.